Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Math with Mrs. O. I'm Ophelia Orate, a principal owner of a school, a math teacher, and an author of 21 books. Today's lesson is rewriting quadratic functions in the form y equals a quantity x minus h quantity squared plus k and finding the vertex axis of symmetry and other properties. We know too well that a quadratic function can also be rewritten as f of x or y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. But why do teachers would like us to rewrite it from its general form to the vertex form? Okay. Because of the following, when a quadratic function is written in its vertex form y plus a quantity x minus h quantity squared plus k. Let's write this. This is the vertex form. We can easily identify the different properties of the parabola. What is a parabola? A parabola is the graph of a quadratic function. Okay, this is its graph. So, again, given the function in its vertex form, we can easily identify the following properties. The vertex is simply the ordered pair HK given here, H and K. The AOS, or the axis of symmetry, is x equals h, the vertical line x equals h, whatever is the h here. The range will be the set of all y's, such that y is greater than or equal to k, the k value of the vertex. This happens when the parabola is opening upward. And it will be the set of all y such that y is less than or equal to k. Again, the k here is the k value of the vertex. This happens when the parabola is opening downward. Now, the parabola opens upward if a is greater than 0. We're referring to the a here. And this is the vertex of your parabola. And the k value, the k value of the vertex, the hk, ordered pair hk, the k value of your parabola will be greater than zero, so the y values are all going up, so the k value is now your minimum value. There, it gives you the minimum value. Whereas, if a is less than zero, your parabola will be opening downward and your vertex here, your vertex here, given by hk, will now be your, the k value of your vertex here, will now be your maximum value. There, as you can see, as you can see, it is the highest value of your parabola, whereas here, the, a, the k value is the lowest or the minimum value of your parabola. And of course, your domain will be the set of all real numbers. Why is this the set of real numbers? Because if you graph a parabola like that, it will go on and on and on, continuously there and continuously there. So the set of all x's are used 
or are possible values for x in a quadratic function or in a parabola there. So now you know that when a quadratic function is given into its vertex form, the different properties like vertex, the axis of symmetry, the range, the opening, whether it's opening upward or downward, and the domain can easily be found. Now, I'm going to show to you how to transform or rewrite a quadratic function written in its general form into its vertex form. Let's take, for example, problem number one. Y equals x squared plus 2x minus 4. What you do is, you just have to complete the square here. How do you do that? Move this a little bit to the right side so that you have a space for the perfect square trinomial. So let's do that. This is now x squared plus 2x plus blank minus 4. As you can see here, we can write a blank plus the negative of blank there. Okay. So this is now y equals, make this a perfect square trinomial, which we already learned in our previous videos. So to make this a perfect square trinomial, square root of x squared is x. If this is plus, this will always be plus. 2 divided by 2. Take note of that. I'm writing here. 2 divided by 2 or 2 times the reciprocal will give you a 1, so you write it here. This was already explained in completing the square. Other videos. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and then u square 1, so that will be 1. But since we added a 1 here, we have to subtract a 1. Why? When you add a 1 and you subtract a 1, are you adding anything? We're not adding anything because 1 minus 1 is 0. So we're not adding anything to the given equation there. Square x is x squared. Multiply this is 1x times 2. That is 2x. Square 1 is 1. There. And then, so... We have to simplify this, you get negative 5. Therefore, let me erase this. Therefore, our equation is now written in the form A, quantity x, minus h, quantity squared, plus a. Isn't it? What is a here? It is 1. There. Now, let us now identify the properties. What is the vertex? Vertex is given by the HK. So here, our vertex is H, which is negative 1. K is negative 5. Wait, but wait. Why is H negative 1 and not 1? Because here, x plus 1, x plus 1 can be written as, let me have a space here, as x minus negative 1 quantity squared plus negative 5. Remember, negative of a negative is positive. That's why your h here, x minus h quantity squared is now negative 1. Yeah. I'm explaining it well because this is normally the problem of my students. They always make a mistake in identifying the H. And then, what about the axis of symmetry? AOS is the axis of symmetry. 
it's x equals h. So our h is negative 1. So we have here x equals negative 1. There, x equals h. Then, what is our range? The range is, you have to identify a first. a is 1. Okay, so meaning, since a equals 1 and this is greater than 0, our graph will be opening upward. That would mean the values of y will be from here, vertex going up. So therefore, your range must be y is greater than equal to the k value of your vertex. k greater than or equal to negative 5. In our next video, I'm going to teach you how to graph a quadratic function and you will see that the vertex will be here. And what else? The opening. So sometimes our teachers will ask us about the opening upward or up, opening up, as you can see here. And the domain will be x is an element of the set of real numbers. Let's move on to our second example. In our second example, I made sure that the coefficient of x squared is not 1. It is now negative 3, so that you will learn how to transform a quadratic function when the coefficient is not 1. Okay. Let's do it this way. Step one, you divide everything by the coefficient of x squared or the numerical coefficient of x squared, which is negative 3, meaning both sides. Meaning, if this is 2, you divide it by 2. If this is 5, you divide by 5. Or if it is 7, then divide by 7. Our intention is to make sure that x squared becomes 1x squared to remove the numerical coefficient here because it is really a lot easier if we remove the numerical coefficient. So we have here y over negative 3 is equal to negative 3x squared over negative 3 is x squared. Negative 6x over negative 3 is positive 2x plus 2 over negative 3 or negative 2 thirds. Now, as we have learned from our first example, it's better to move this to the other side. You know, a little bit, no, not to the other side, just a little bit here to have a space for the completing the square because we will have to complete the square here. So we have to move this just here. And whatever you added here, you subtract here. You subtract later here. Okay, let's do it. So this is retained to be y over negative 3. This is now x squared. Square root of x squared is x. This is plus, so that is plus. 2 divided by 2 is 1, one pt squared. Then, you do the reverse. Square x, you get x squared. 1x times 2 is 2x, so we're just checking. Square 1, that is 1. We added 1, so you subtract 1 here. Whatever you add here, you subtract here so that you're adding 0. So this is now a perfect square trinomial equivalent to this. Now let's add this to, we have here negative 2 thirds plus, we can make this negative 3 over 3. Why? Negative 3 over 3 is negative 1. So this now will give us a negative 5 over 3. We write it here. 
y over negative 3 is equal to, may I erase this, x plus 1 quantity squared plus negative 5 over 3. As you can see, we have a denominator here which is negative 3. So how do we remove this now? We multiply negative 3 over 1 to all, to all sides. So multiply negative 3 there, multiply negative 3 here, and also multiply negative 3 here, or negative 3 over 1. This will cancel here, so we are left with y equals negative 3 quantity x plus 1 quantity squared plus, you can see that this also cancels, it will give you a, a negative 1 here, and negative 1 times negative 5 is positive 5. There, it, this is now in the form a, quantity x minus h quantity squared plus k. Now can we now identify the, the properties? So the vertex as we have discussed in number one is always hk, hk. So our vertex is now the ordered pair H is negative 1 K is 5 the axis of symmetry or AOS is X equals H the H value of your vertex is negative 1 opening the opening is determined by the value of a. a here is negative. a x squared. a is negative, so it must be opening down. In other words, your parabola must be opening downwards. The range, since it is opening downward, must be all values from k down. So that would be y such that y is less than or equal to k, the k value, 5. This is, remember, your h and this is your k. And uh, do you have a minimum or maximum value? Since this is the highest value of the graph, so your k, k, which is equal to 5 here, is now your maximum value the maximum value and of course you also have the domain the domain the set of all possible values of x will always be x such that x is an element of r well uh, other teachers accept just x element of r you have to follow what your teacher wants here I hope you understood everything here, even if it is a little complicated before we end. But we always have to remember to add kindness, subtract judgment, multiply understanding equals Mrs. O's good life equation. Please don't forget to press the subscribe button and the bell button. Thank you.